home fires are eight times faster today than in years past. In fact, we may have as little as two minutes to escape a fire. To help us understand why, we asked Ray Reynolds, former Iowa State Fire Marshal and current day fire chief, to help us understand the fire problem. People absolutely have this misconception. It'll never happen to me. If it does, I can get all my pets and kids out of the home. And that is simply not true. The average person is likely to see five fires in their lifetime. So what makes you think it won't happen to you? I wish there was a way that we could accurately portray what fire looks like for the public because the movies Backdraft and Chicago Fire and these other shows, they don't do it justice. Fire is scary. Buildings collapse, windows break. Uh, it's the crackling of the fire, the superheated gas that's down to the floor. Uh, even with the best of fire protection gear that we carry in the fire department, you cannot see your hand in front of your face. I can't tell you how many people I've been to at the scene of a fire where there's been a fatality and the family was just awestruck that they even had a fire, let alone this becoming the worst day for the rest of their life. And the thing that haunts me and still haunts me to this day is there's this outline in the bed that shows exactly how they were laying. Jim McMullen, the former California State Fire Marshal and current Fire Commissioner, was one of the experts who remembers the Indiana Dunes test from the 1970s, as well as the test performed in 2004. He sees a problem, decades in the making. And three minutes from the time they had an open flame on the sofa, three minutes from a flame that high, until we had flashover in the room. Three minutes, not a lot of time. You have to get out as soon as you have any idea that you have a house fire. Tim DeDeer, today a Metro Fire Marshal and Deputy Chief, performed research as a graduate student for a leading university in Texas. The conclusion of the test, we had two types. We had a smoldering ignition fires and we had flaming ignition fires. And the smoldering fires we uh, ignited in the cushion of a chair and we duplicated this three times for the data for 16 total different tests. The ionization smoke alarm that we uh, tested, the probability of failure was 55%. During the flaming ignition fire, the probability of failure was at 19.8%. It's estimated over 90% of homes have the least reliable and cheapest smoke alarms known as ionization. While this technology meets the minimum standard, tests by the government, universities, fire departments, and even the media continue to expose the failure of these alarms. These are the alarms known for going off when we cook and we wave towels to try and silence them. But surrounded by smoldering smoke, they can remain silent for as long as 30 minutes or longer. 30 priceless minutes when it comes to escaping a fire. It's easy to see why the death rate remains unchanged for decades. I can tell you countless stories where somebody had to knock on a door and wake people up while the entire attic was engulfed in flames. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've been on the scene of a fatality where people said, I didn't hear any smoke alarms or I didn't hear anything. I mean, our house was full of smoke. It was billowing out of all of the windows and yet our smoke detector never went off. My house was at the time a four-year-old brand new home with seven smoke detectors. Uh, they were wired in with battery backup. I knew they all worked. We were very diligent on replacing batteries and things like that for it. And that's when it kind of dawned on me, wow, I never had a, my, none of my smoke detectors were going off. In a fire, you don't realize that you lose every picture, every video, everything that I I've ever possibly worked for. My little four-year-old who trusts me with everything, you know, I'm, I'm her, her hero, her daddy's little girl, and yet I couldn't protect my little girl. The deputy family thought they were prepared when an electrical short inside the wall of their home changed their lives forever. We'd check our smoke detectors, we kept our smoke detectors tested and batteries in them. I had come home late from work, kids were in bed, um, I came in, it was quiet for the most part. Um, I got settled down, well, nothing out of the normal. And then I heard a thump that wasn't the right kind of thump. And as a mom, that's all I can tell you. You just know which is right and which isn't. And I sat up and I went, <gasps> and I sucked in smoke. I hopped up, I ran down the hallway, went through the answer room at the bottom of the stairs and went to go up the stairs, but the stairwell was on fire and my youngest daughter's room doorway was on fire. 
My husband got up and said, what's the matter? I said, the house is on fire. 911. I have a fire in my home. Are you at 4255 Mazer Station Road? Yes. Okay, you need to get everybody out of this house, okay? Yes. Do you have the phone that you can take with you? Yes. Okay, get everybody out of the house. And do you know what's on fire? In the hallway upstairs. Upstairs. I woke up the fuse box. It's sparking. Fuse, okay. Get everybody out, okay? Okay. I'm going to keep you on the line if you've got a mobile, okay? But get out, all right, while I get the fire engine going. It'll take me just a second. I've got the baby I'm going to crawl with. You're calling? I'm just a baby. I'm okay. going to crawl with the leave baby. The, leave the phone then, okay? okay? Leave the phone and get out. Okay, bye. Bye. He ran outside, ran around the front to the front of the house, went up 20 stairs and kicked in the dead bolted front door. Tried three times to go in to get the kids out and couldn't do it. It was, the floor was so hot. And as I come out, my husband's standing there. I said, where's the kids? And he goes, takes, I'm sorry, big hand and waves and says, they're gone. And I turned around and that's the first time I had a look at the house. And as I turned around and I looked at the house, my youngest girl's room was completely engulfed in flames and the living room windows exploded. As a parent, your worst nightmare is that you can't protect your children. As opposed to meeting minimum code, I would recommend everyone provide the optimum protection for yourself and your family. We had smoke detectors in every room in the house. They either burnt completely up or they melted down the wall. Not once did any of them go off. I do believe that investing in your own fire prevention plan, it should be your responsibility and you should own your fire prevention plan and do everything you can to protect your family.